let's do this. Let's finish this story. We are locked and loaded. We have a bunch of stuff. Let's start with the invasion. Card number one. You've crossed the deadly estate surrounding the Marsden house. Come face to face with spirits from beyond the grave and found yourself at the mercy of strange scientific experiments. You fought oversized super intelligent chimpanzees, freed them from mind control, and discovered a counterfeiting ring along the way. Now, a fleet of UFOs is barreling toward Earth, and unless you can free the imprisoned alien ambassador before they arrive, the entire planet is doomed. The alien is locked away in the old prison beneath the mansion, Professor Marsden says. It's a dangerous labyrinth not easily navigated. What are you talking about? You reply. There are three cells in that place. where We were there 45 minutes ago. That's the new prison, the professor says, where antisocial chimpanzees are held until they can be rehabilitated. The entire compound is built over the ruins of an old prison which burned down more than a century ago. My great-great-great-grandfather was the warden. You remember your strange out-of-body visions in the elevator and the deep sense of foreboding that came with them. We should never have put him down there. The professor says, The prison has always been a horrible, cursed place, but now that the creature has found a way to make contact with the world outside his cell... Wait a second, you say. This alien ambassador isn't just responsible for my nightmares, is he? The alien was the one who called me this morning. Putting it together really low. But how did he even find me? The phone book is full of private investigators with far more experience than I have. You suddenly remember, however, that your Yellow Pages ad doesn't list you as an aspiring detective. It lists you as a psychic investigator. I've done this. I'll find the alien, you say, to reassure yourself as much as the professor. I, I was born to do this. Before you can respond, the professor notices something on the mainframe console and gasps. The alien armada will enter Earth's atmosphere in just 20 minutes. You must find the alien ambassador and free him quickly or all is lost. Get roll 108. Clue 108, which is probably release the alien ambassador and save planet Earth. Okay, you say. You've been down there before, right? Do you have a map? No! Carol handled all that, of course. All I know is that there are two ways to get into the structure. Through the original prison, pre, uh, prison entrance around the back of the house and through a long, dark hallway that I've always been too afraid to investigate. Don't forget to keep your, earth, uh, your earpiece so we can communicate. So we can either head for the prison entrance or let's go down the long, scary hallway. We ain't scared of anything. Uh, except this picture is scary. Just you wait and see it. It's spooky. After 50 yards, the hallway connects to an older passageway with walls of crumbling brick. You wonder why Professor Marsden built an entirely new underground laboratory when he could have simply renovated the old prison structure. Soon the answer presents itself. It's because the, enti the place is entirely, utterly infested with ghosts. Um... A spectral figure in a black and white striped uniform floats towards you. He probably died when the prison burned down because he's on fire. Does the ghost does ghost fire burn living people the way normal fire does? The spirit attacks, so you're about to find out. All right. So fight the flaming ghost. If you have clue 58, you automatically win. 30, 56, 61. So anyways, those, 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 these are no, no. Oh, we don't have 58. It's right here. It was a ghost trap. Cool. I checked. I cheated. Um, all right. So. Um. Let's fight him. So we're gonna use our tear gas gun. So once again, two or higher wins it. And that's a two, which is great. We move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. From here, you can leave the room through a rotting wooden door or a hole in the brick wall that leads to a tunnel. Ooh, so we can either go through the door or the hole in the wall. Let's go through the rotting door. That sounds scary. There's a closed door on the far side of this room. You're startled to see a guard in a pale uniform standing in front of it, his back turned towards you. All new inmates must report to the laundry room to be issued clothing, he mutters without turning around. This throws you for a loop. You didn't expect to find anyone down here. He turns suddenly, revealing that his head is, par is a partially transparent bone white skull, empty eye sockets burning red with rage. All new inmates must report to the laundry room, he screeches. He gestures towards an old rope and pulley elevator, presumably intending for you to climb it. But if you want to find out what's behind the door across the room, you're going to have to fight the ghost guard to reach it. Man, having a ghost trapping thing would be great here. Um, 
So yeah, we are going to fight him. Once again, we just need a two or higher because we're going to use our tear gas gun. Thank God we got a weapon. And thank God we can roll a two or higher. So we move two spaces on a psychic track. Our psychic skills are getting incredible. And we go to story card 132. You pummeled the ghost guard into a fine mist. He won't bother you anymore. You race across the room and open the door to a bit of a surprise. Two ghost guards are sitting on a burnt out bunk playing poker. They both turn to look at you and their see-through jaws drop. Another one, the clean shaven one says, we must rush to warn her that a second of her kind walks among us. You're not sure who these ghosts are talking about, but their cards and poker chips appear, disappear in a puff of smoke as they flee through a closed door. It's the only door out of this room, but there's also a ladder that leads up to an old watchtower. You guys. Well, we can follow them. Or we can climb the watchtower. You jump off the top of the ladder and land in a crumbling brick watchtower overlooking the prison yard. The ghost of a very old man is staring into the distance. It's General Marsden. He looks older than the last time you saw him. It's my fault, he moans. Oh, my fault. He looks down in dismay. His face is especially haunted, even for a ghost. Forgive me, he says. I beg you. Forgive you for what, you ask? You must say it, says the general. You must say that my unforgiveness so of my soul may be released. Eh. I'm a good guy. Let's forgive him. 122. Please don't betray me. Thank you, the ghost moans. Thank you! In a flash of light, he's gone. If you knew that getting rid of these things was that easy, you would have been forgiving ghosts left and right. Move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Guys, we are in level five psychic ability. This is amazing. From here, you can see two paths out of this section of the prison. One leads into a group of cells and the other is a hole in the ground that glows a strange light. Let's try the cell block, block because I don't want to go to that scary hole in the ground. Hmm. The professor's voice comes over your, your earpiece. Watch out. This is the section of the prison where the most dangerous inmates were held. I wouldn't have come here if I knew that. I wouldn't have come here if I knew that. And one of the cells looks like it's been remodeled quite recently. It has lead panels covering most of the original bars, but through a small opening in the door you see a crystalline entity levitating above the, f the floor, moaning softly. It's the alien ambassador. At the top of the door, just below the ceiling, you see a high-tech lock behind a thick layer of transparent material. If you had something like a revolver, you could try shooting the lock open. It would probably take a really careful aim and a very steady hand, otherwise you're going to have to find another way into the cell. We don't have clue 63. So we're going to go to 141. This is the old cafeteria and dozens of ghost prisoners are milling around along with one frail looking female specter in a tattered dress. At last, she says when she sees you, I have finally made contact with the other side. Uh, hi, you say. She puts her translucent hands on yours. I am the medium charged with shepherding the poor lost spirits to their final resting places. Go toward the light. You don't belong here with us among the living. But I'm... But you're... You finally decide it's not worth arguing with her about which one of you is dead. The walls here are in bad shape with two holes big enough for you to fit through. One hole is pitch black and the other is lit up with a green glow. Go into the light, the ghost streams as you contemplate your choices. We're going to go in the dark hole. Because I'm not dead. And I don't want to die. <sighs> the tunnel leads to an exit high up on the wall of a large lead-lined prison cell. Beneath you, the crystalline form of the crystallic ambassador lies motionless on the floor. The ambassador looks up and sees you and sends a telepathic message directly into your frontal lobes. What manner of creature can pass through the impenetrable walls of my prison, he transmits. Whoever you are, have mercy and free me from this tomb. Impenetrable walls. 
It's a tunnel, you think back at him. Have you even tried escaping? How long have you been down here? I am greatly weakened from my ordeal, the ambassador thinks of you. Also, it's really dark. The only way out of this cell is back the way you came, so if you want to take the ambassador back to the surface with you, you're going to have to lift him into the tunnel. He is quite heavy. Cool. We're going to give him a boost. So, four or higher? Holy shit, we fucking did it. So we're going to lower the danger by five. That's nice. That puts us all the way down to three. And then we're going to go to story card 146. You drag the crystalline alien back to the security room where the professor waits. On the monitor, you see a, gigant, a giant UFO entering Earth's atmosphere. Hurry, the professor says in a panic. The armada is almost upon us. The alien ambassador rushes at the console. He pushes a button and makes a series of harsh noises you can only assume are his native language. If you have clue 90, well, I don't. Hmm. Um, so we just keep reading. When he is finished, the alien sends you a telepathic message. I have contacted my people. All is well. So now what, you ask? Go outside and await their arrival, he transmit. Do not fear them. We have forgiven all your transgressions and will not murder you or the species or the rest of your species, is what I should say. If you have, or if you're level five on the psychic scale, let's go to 153. You walk outside to greet the crystal saucers gathered in the skies above the Marsden house. A column of light erupts from the mothership enveloping you and the professor. A voice is heard inside both of your heads. Though you captured our ambassador, the voice says, you have proven yourselves worthy of forgiveness. We are impressed with your devotion and development of the intergalactic psychic arts. A hatch opens on the ship. We humbly invite you to the chrysalic homeworld. The professor is downright gritty. giddy. Just imagine. We're the, huge, the first human beings to ever, before you can finish, everything goes blank. When you are both, when you come to, you're both in the midst of a crystalline city where light has never looked so beautiful and air has never smelled so clean. You spend years there learning secrets of advanced crystalline technology. When the time comes to return home, you choose to stay. Well, that one was a shorter chapter than I thought. It's only been 13 minutes. So we're going to spend some time seeing some other things that I might have missed. So, if you have clue 90, clue 90 was this crystalline necklace piece. We would have drawn 112 if we were psychic level like this. Huh. So, if we had clue 90 and we were 1 to 3, it would have said, the pendant glows and makes a soft noise so you bring it close to your ear. It's an alien translator. Uh, the ambassador screeches away in the following in plain English. The vile and foolish humans suspect nothing. Proceed with planetary exterminations. Repeat. I will repeat. I will kill them all. And then if we were 40, psych level 4 or 5, we would have got 116. Which is, the Earthlings have learned our ways well, deactivate all weapons, draft an official peace treaty so that our worlds may live in harmony forever. So then we would have gone to the back, and we got the level 5 on the psychic scale, so we got story card 153. Then, 2 to 4, think something's fishy and demand more answers, go to story card 140. Oh, okay. So what would have happened in that one is he would have then fought us like this and we would have had to fight him. And if we succeeded, we would have gone to story card 147. Holy shit, we're going to follow this line in a second. Uh, the other option was story card 149.
There's nothing left to do but wait as watch enormous soft saucers. So planet Earth was charged with high crimes against the Crystallic Empire and was sentenced to extermination. Um, uh, so... They say they're going to take us as a sacrifice. And we would have got vaporized. We saved the planet, but we would have got vaporized in the process. Okay. So then... We would have fought this guy, and assuming we won, we would have gone to 147. Which is this one. Yes, so we're following this line right now. Let's see where this goes. So if you have clues 92, 96, and 102, we only have those ones. We go to story card 148, which we would have made this sick-ass alien gun, it looks like. And then if you have clues 4, 3... 431, 88, 123, or 127, which we don't have any of those. We would have gone to story card 150, which would have us destroying the alien spaceship. So what was clue like four? Let's look at four, because that's from the first one. Oh, it's a battery. Oh, you need a battery to power it. Let's see, 31, is that also a battery? It is. 88 is probably also a battery, and 123 and 127, those are all batteries. And we would have blown up the aliens, so that's cool. Uh, if we didn't have those ones, we would have gone to clue 143. Earth is doomed. Wow, there's actually, a, there's a lot of ways this can go. One leads to Earth being destroyed. And, holy shit, you get in a spaceship. We build the spaceship and we try to leave, and we either make it or we don't. Nightmare. Uh, if you have one or two of 92, 96, or 102, which we actually don't have any of them. Oh, 92, we do have 92. Oh, that one you go to story card 143 if you have some of them, which we do. And 143, I missed that one, it's somewhere. Huh, can't even find 143. But from the sounds of it, we got the best ending. Lucky, I suppose. Um, yeah, this game's pretty neat. It was pretty fun. Uh, this last one was a lot shorter than I expected, but it makes sense. The deck was so huge because it had um, all of the endings. But I think it's a pretty cool game. Um, and I'm excited to see. I'm going to probably play it with one or two other more groups from the channel to see how they do things differently. But thanks for watching. In the meantime, you have a good one. I'm going to pack all this game up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.